In this video, we're going to look at different types of regimes. Now, what exactly are we talking about when we say regime? Well, a regime is a way of characterizing the type of government in a country. It's the sort of general and continuing nature of the institution and how those institutions work. It is a way of characterizing who governs and why. And we're not merely talking about a government. A government is something that can change after an election. However, the regime will not. The, the regime has to do with long-term stability. The long-term general characteristics of a state and the institutional arrangements within. How do we compare regimes? Well, when we talk about classifying different regimes, we're referring to how the government is organized. Is it a hereditary monarchy, for example, or is it a presidential republic? Those would be two different types of regimes. Also, how is the power distributed within that regime? Is it an authoritarian one that's very top-down and controlled by um, a, a military group or perhaps an authoritarian leader? Or is it bottom-up that allows for democratic public participation? Let's look at a couple different examples. We can start by describing regimes as belonging to two general categories, a monarchy or a republic. In a monarchy, the head of state would be somebody hereditary, like a king or queen. And in a republic, the head of state could be somebody like a president. Within a monarchy, you could have a democratic one or an authoritarian one. The democratic one we, can, we, we refer to as a constitutional monarchy, where the monarch gives power to the people and they are sort of bound, their, their roles and responsibilities are dictated by a constitution. In an absolute monarchy, the monarch exercises absolute power over the people. We can have similar categories in a republic. We can have a democratic republic where the people participate and elect the leaders, or we can have an authoritarian republic where there is little public participation and the authority runs top down. Canada would be an example of a constitutional monarchy with a queen represented by the governor general as a head of state and the people get to choose a prime minister. Therefore, it is a constitutional monarchy. It's democratic with a monarch as a head of state. How about the United States? Well, the United States is not a monarchy. They are a republic and the president as the head of state is chosen at regular intervals by the people. Therefore, we would consider that a democratic republic. What about a place like Saudi Arabia? What would we have there? Well, it is a monarchy in that it's ruled by a royal family, but it is an absolute monarchy where the public does not elect the leader. In the case of North Korea, we would consider that an authoritarian republic. The head of state is a president and they lead in a very authoritarian top-down manner where the people have very little input, zero, in, in their government. Now, I would put an asterisk beside North Korea because the hereditary nature of the regime, even though it is technically a republic, there are some elements of a dynastic inheritance of power. So it can, it sort of blurs the line here between a republic and a monarchy. Uh, but this is a useful framework for trying to understand how we classify different regimes. You can start with, is it a monarchy or is it a republic? Who is in charge, a president or a king or queen? Then within that, how does the power flow? Is it top down from the leader down or is it bottom up where there is democratic participation from the people? 